Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of Blackbird's Brew. Happy Tuesday and welcome to Pagan Problems. Astrology. There has got to be a better way to teach it. It is no secret that my uh, spiritual Achilles heel is the discipline of astrology. My only goal from the very inception of my studies has been just to make progress, understanding it each year. And let's just say that uh, process has gone much more slowly than I ever anticipated. And it doesn't help that there seems to be a myriad of astrological systems, and when you're researching, it isn't always apparent to a novice if the information they've discovered is uh, just kind of generally uniformly accepted, or if it's only accepted by one school of thought, or if it indeed has any merit at all. When one is at the beginning, not only is one not aware of all of the various controversies within the astrological systems, one also does not possess the necessary knowledge to make an independent judgment. And the prospect of learning astrology is daunting enough. But when you throw in the idea of having to study multiple systems and to learn enough to decide which system you think has the most merit, it's enough to turn a person into a day drinker. And to make it worse, many of the books, blogs, and videos that attempt to teach astrology tend to confuse the issue rather than clarify it. Gang, we've got to step it up and do better because we cannot build on this quicksand. And that's precisely how I have felt when it comes to astrology. Let me know in the comments if you share that sentiment. I mean, I want to find out if this feeling is widespread or if it's just uh, special to me. And if it is widespread, then we have absolutely got to create a better methodology for teaching astrology. Now, there are a few hurdles uh, that I would like to bring to the table for discussion. The first among them being the credibility issue. This is really a huge issue for astrological videos because there are some people that just as soon as I see them, as soon as they open their mouths and I hear the tone of their voice and the way they phrase things, just my whole knee-jerk reaction to them is that they are a charlatan. Everything that person projects comes across as questionable, and oftentimes they will be turning the video into a sales pitch for whatever book or class that they're trying to get people to sign up for. Uh, very rarely do I find people who are just presenting it a little bit more straight of, you know, I'm just here to educate. I'm here to help people along and to understand this subject. I mean, so often I come across people who just, they, they just feel greasy when you look at them. They just, it doesn't come off well. Uh, the next hurdle is really poor teaching skills or the complete absence of teaching skills. Because as I've said, astrology is extremely complex. It's detail oriented. It requires an understanding not only of the signs, the planets, the houses, but also their relationships to each other and how this creates particular energetic environments and what that portends. And I will not pretend that it is easy to distill that information down in a concise manner, but in order to teach newcomers, that is precisely what needs to happen. It's a very difficult balance to present informa information that's simple and and straightforward enough to where new students can grasp it, uh, but still is able to provide enough depth of information to be relevant to people who have acquired a more advanced understanding. And yet, that is the job, the task that is voluntarily undertaken by these astrology channels. If someone has a channel and that is their specific focus, then that is the job that they claim to be able to do. And I am begging on bended knee on behalf of myself and everyone else who struggles with this subject, please do a better job. Now, the third obstacle I want to highlight is attitude and presentation. There are some channel hosts, they just come across as extremely condescending. I mean, just because someone hasn't fully come to grips with astrology as a whole, it doesn't make them unintelligent or undeserving of respect. And it also doesn't mean that they know nothing. It just means that they haven't had enough to fit everything together. Then you have other channels. Uh, the presenter will spend 30 minutes to convey five minutes worth of information. Now, uh, we all get rambly when we do live streams or when we're in collaboration videos because those are more conversational and off the cuff. But if you are presenting an essay or a video class, then say what needs to be said and call it good. People have lives to lead.
And then we have presenters who also have an issue with uh, certain habits of speech that they're probably not aware of, which is why occasionally you have to go back, do the cringing thing, and actually re-listen to yourself on video. Uh, some of these habits involve up-talking, in which each sentence sounds like a question, which grates on the ears, or the overuse of a word or a phrase that's unconsciously used to help the presenter to get from one sentence to the next. Uh, one example of this was on a channel which shall remain nameless so as not to embarrass the guilty party, in which the presenter would say, okay, at the end of just about every other sentence. Not only did that detract from the information, but there came a point in the video where I had to stop watching. Because I, if I heard that person say, okay, one more time, I was not going to be responsible for my actions. And when the audience is irritated by someone's manner of speech, or if they're or just their demeanor, it means that people stop listening. And it doesn't matter how informative the video might be otherwise and how they're really missing out. Well, you know, if the information is so important, you know, maybe it's just as important to present it, it well as it is for the person seeking the information to be willing to actually hear it. Two-way street there. And just to be clear, no one is perfect with this, and I am fully aware that the day is coming, probably sooner than I think, when someone is going to watch a video of mine and then verbally disembowel me about my own personal shortcomings in speech and presentation, and likely that criticism will be 100% deserved. So I'm not saying that I'm this wonderful example that other people should follow. I'm just saying is that everyone who has a channel should try to be aware of these issues and work at making adjustments so we don't detract from the message we're trying to send out. Now, for all this, astrology has profound value, and it's a tool that helps us understand the energy within ourselves, other people, and just in the ether generally. It's almost like a weather report that helps give us a greater insight into what the weather pattern is, what we can expect from it, and what conditions we're most likely to deal with. So here's my suggestions, and I would love for the rest of the community to actually put in their two cents on this. If astrology instruction could be adapted so as to work with people's natural thought process rather than against it, it would go a long way to improving general understanding of the subject, it would help hone teaching skills, and it would take community discussion to a higher level. So uh, what, I would, what I would recommend is to teach in stages. Begin with the big picture. Explain from the word go that there are different systems and briefly describe the differences between briefly. Then explain which system you use and why you prefer it over the others, and that's all you have to say. Then provide the broad strokes. Show the people how the system fits together and what the main components are. You don't have to get too detailed at this point, just let the students get the gist. Next, provide the most significant and the most essential details of each component and provide a concise explanation of why that matters. By this point, the student will be able to digest the information without getting overwhelmed. Then finally, get into the application. Whether you're demonstrating how the system describes what's going on on the world scene or how the student can use it to better understand themselves, Give it a basis of comparison between the concept and how that concept manifests in reality. And obviously, this chain of events would not be one video or one discussion or one conversation. Uh, trying to cram too much information in at once is precisely what results in people running away from astrology screaming. I propose that this gradual process is more likely to be successful for both teacher and student. My hope is that by bringing this up is that it will begin a larger conversation in the pagan and the astrological communities and maybe we could all take a second look at how we're doing things and, and ask ourselves, you know, is this really the best we can do? I mean, is there some way we could make this a little bit more straightforward, a little bit more accessible? Is there a way we can draw on the practical application a little bit better? What can we do to improve this state of affairs? Because many people right now, they are searching. They are wanting to explore spiritual ideas right now. We have an excellent opportunity to show the value of pagan theology and the usefulness of pagan practices, including astrology. So let's seize that moment and make the necessary adjustments that need to be made to become better teachers, which will in turn result in better and more successful students. So that's my two cents. Let me know what you think in the comments or come on to Gilded and tell me what you think there. There's a link to join us in the description box below. You're welcome to join us and I hope to see you soon. But that will do it for now and I will see you next time. Bye.